Hi everyone! Today we're going to be learning the basics of how to identify trees using your leaves. I hope after watching this video you will want to go outside and give it a try yourself. As for right now, let's get started with the video. To the untrained eye, it might seem like I'm showing you a picture of a leaf and a picture of a branch right now, but that's not the case. Both pictures show two different types of leaves, the first being Cornus florida, otherwise known as flowering dogwood, and it has simple leaves. And the second photo is a member of the genus Fraxinus, otherwise known as ash, and it has compound leaves. Now what's the difference between a simple and a compound leaf? It all comes down to the leaf blade, or the lamina, which is a broad flat area where photosynthesis occurs. A simple leaf will only have one leaf blade per leaf. However, a compound leaf will have multiple small leaflets per blade. If you look at our example compound leaf, it has seven total leaflets. A leaflet itself is a leaf-like structure that makes up a compound leaf. Now what about those little nubs that are at the ends of the leaves? <laughs> those are the petioles, which is the part of the stalk that connects the leaf to the stem. Both simple and compound leaves have petioles. However, only compound leaves have a rachis, which is the point on a compound leaf where the leaflets meet. A helpful way to determine if you have a simple or a compound leaf is to look for a bud. Here we have a photo of the stem of a Juglans nigra, otherwise known as a black walnut tree. In this photo, we can spot multiple lateral or auxiliary buds, which are buds that reside on the side of a stem. If a leaf is compound, all of the leaflets will come from one bud. If you find a lateral bud, look at what is attached to the same node as it. A node is where buds attach to the stem, and the space between two nodes is called the internode. Any leaf attached to the same node will be either simple or compound, depending on what is supposed to come from that bud. Determining if a tree has opposite or alternate leaves is a very important step in species identification. Lonicera mackie, otherwise known as a myrrh honeysuckle, is a species that has opposite leaves. An opposite leaf pattern is seen when two leaves arise from one node directly across from each other. On the other hand, Sassafras albidum, or the sassafras tree, has an alternate leaf pattern. An alternate leaf pattern is seen when one leaf arises from each node in an alternating pattern. Okay, that's enough with the stem, so let's move on back to the leaves themselves. Let's start with leaf margins. A leaf margin is the outer edge of a leaf. There are two main categories. These are entire and lobed. Circus canadensis, otherwise known as eastern redbud, is entire, which means that its leaf margin has no lobes whereas Quercus alba, otherwise known as white oak, is lobed, which means that its leaf margin contains projections that extend from the center of the leaf. Let's dig a little deeper into lobed leaves and talk about lobes and sinuses. We already know that a lobe is a projection that extends from the center of a leaf, and if we look at our Quercus alba leaf, we will see that it has nine lobes. Sinuses, on the other hand, are the indents in the margin between two lobes. On our Quercus alba leaf, there are eight sinuses. Besides being entire or lobed, leaves can be toothed, otherwise known as serrate, or they can be smooth. When a leaf is toothed, its margin has a saw-like texture to it. An example of this would be Populus deltoides, otherwise known as eastern cottonwood. And we can take this a step further and look at a leaf that is doubly toothed. To be doubly toothed, the teeth of the margin have a saw-like texture themselves. An example of a genus with doubly toothed leaves would be ulmus, otherwise known as elm. Lastly, for smooth leaves, there are no teeth present on the leaf margin. An example of this would be Circus canadensis. Veining patterns are also helpful in leaf identification because they influence the overall shape of the leaf. There are two main types of veining patterns for simple leaves that are super important to know. The first veining pattern is palmy, which looks like if you were to put your hand out in front of you and spread your fingers. Acer saccharum, otherwise known as sugar maple, is a very well-known species that has a palmate veining pattern. The next commonly found veining pattern is pinnate, 
which resembles a feather. It has similar parts on either side of its midvein. Quercus imbricaria, otherwise known as shingle oak, is a good example of a pinnate veining pattern. Now, the midvein is a central vein of the leaf that secondary veins will come from. Like simple leaves, compound leaves can also be palmate or pinnate instead of being connected. The leaflets make up the hand or the feather shape. Acer negundo, otherwise known as box elder, is a fairly common species that is palmately compound, which means that all of the leaflets originate from one spot on the leaf. We can see that right here. If we imagine this leaf as a hand, it would only have three fingers because there are only three leaflets. On the other hand, Juglans nigra, or black walnut, is an example of a pinnately compound leaf. Pinnately compound leaves have leaflets that are arranged on either side of their rachis. Now we can take this a step further because some leaves are bipinnately compound, which means that each of their leaflets is divided again into even more leaflets. And I know, that is a whole lot of leaflets. But an example of a tree that is bipinnately compound is Albizia julbrisin, or the mimosa tree. As we've seen, there are a lot of small ways to differentiate between leaves, but there is, however, another way. That way is to see if the leaf is glabrous, glaucous, or pubescent. A glabrous leaf is one that is hairless. An example of a glabrous leaf is the top of our friend Quercus imbricaria. However, interestingly enough, the bottom of a Quercus imbricaria leaf is pubescent, which means that it is hairy or fuzzy. Now that we're familiar with glabrous and pubescent, it's time to tackle glaucous. A glaucous leaf is one that appears bluish, white, and waxy. An example of a glaucous leaf would be the underside of an Acer saturinum leaf, otherwise known as silver maple. You can see that it has that palish coloration to it. Now there are some additional traits that leaves may have that we as plant identifiers could put to use. Some leaves, like those of Quercus rubra, otherwise known as red oak, have bristles at the end of their leaves. A bristle is a stiff hair that typically occurs at the end of a lobe. Another trait that is less common is glands. A species in my area that has glands is Prunus serotina, otherwise known as black cherry. Glands release nectar as a way to pay insects that eat herbivorous insects that can be harmful to the cherry tree. Lastly, stipules are a pair of leaf-like structures that grow at the end of a petiole. The stipules pictured are that of Liriodendron tulipifera, or the tulip tree. After they fall off, they leave behind a stipule scar, and in this case, it will be all the way around the twig of the tree. This can be useful for identifying the twig in the winter time. But okay, just for funsies, we're going to do an example. Here we have an unknown tree species, and some of you might already know the answer, but please don't shout it out because that would be kind of rude. But we're going to work through a series of questions to review what we've learned, and together we are going to identify this tree. So there are six main questions you should keep in mind when you are identifying a tree. The first being, is it opposite or alternate? Based on the section of the twig shown here, we can safely say that it is alternate because the leaves are attached in an alternating pattern. Are the leaves simple or compound? They'd be simple because they are not broken into leaflets. Are our leaves toothed or smooth? They are smooth because the margin of the leaves do not have a saw-like texture. Are the leaves lobed or entire? These leaves are lobed. This particular species is interesting because it has three different types of leaves. The first is single lobed, which could be classified as entire, but it also has a two lobed and a three lobed leaf, so therefore we are going with lobed. The next question is, are the leaves glaucous, glabrous, or pubescent? The leaves are glabrous, and the way we would tackle this is, are the leaves bluish white or waxy in color? They are not. Are the leaves furry and fuzzy visibly? They are not, so they are hairless and smooth, so therefore they are glabrous. All right, and so the last question we have to ask ourselves is, does this species have any extra traits? This question was a bit of a trick question because it does have an extra trait, and its extra trait is odor. 
when you crumple the leaf, it releases an odor that is fruity and to me smells a whole lot like fruity pebbles. So I'm sorry for tricking you, but it is what it is. Okay, so what plant species is this? It is none other than Sassafras albidum, otherwise known as the Sassafras tree. All right, well, that is all for this video. I will have a list of the vocabulary words that we went over in this video up in the comment section below. And I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you all in my next videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.